Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines. This is I Am Loved Church. Well, it's been a while. It feels like it's been a long time, actually. <clears throat> kind of like going through life and hitting points of discouragement, points of fear, points, uh, points, I keep saying. Uh, it's just been crazy lately. Um, maybe some of you guys can relate. I haven't been feeling so good about myself. Um, probably just as far as like what I'm going through and y'all probably can definitely relate. <sighs> you hit the seasons in your life where you're just like, God, what the heck is going on? I just feel like I'm left in the dark about a lot of things going on in my life, you know, about myself, about people, about what God is doing. And I'm like, I don't see the purpose or the point in any of this. But just because I don't understand it doesn't mean there ha isn't purpose in what we're going through. <clears throat> it's been pretty crazy. Um, I don't want to get into it too much. But uh, I would just say I don't. I don't want to be in this situation forever, you know what I mean? I don't want to be on this earth forever. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but earth kind of sucks. <laughs> it does. I mean, I woke up today and I was just like any other day, like, I don't want to go to work. Not most of the days. I mean, actually, I don't know. Those days you're just like, I don't want to be around people. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to be responsible. I, this is just what, you know, why would you create us, Lord, where people are mean, you know, they're ungrateful. People are jerks. They're selfish, self-centered. <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, I'm a cashier at a grocery store, and it's just like, getting disrespected like about not nothing you know the way i bag people's groceries the way i the way i uh look at people or don't look at them or look at them too long like people want to fight me you know what i mean people want to get upset they want to complain about me <clears throat> they jump to different lines and stuff and it, you know it's even that's just the people the customers that's not even the people i work with you know and constantly seeing injustice in the world and I guess to my perspective and having to trust God through all that and try to see past that and try to love people past those things and trying to forgive people on a regular basis who come in the store maybe it's like that where you live or what you're going through at church or whatever and it's just like I don't know how long I can do this. <laughs> you know, I got two kids and I'm like, man, I don't, I don't I'm married and I'm like, I don't, I, it's like impossible. It just seems like some days are just impossible. Like I don't have the strength to deal with this. I don't have the patience. I don't have the, the knowledge or the wisdom to do with this Lord, to do it again another day. You know, I need hope, man. I need, I need, I need help. <clears throat> getting up, getting motivated. Coffee is not enough. Monsters and energy drinks throughout the day are not enough. <laughs> this is beyond me. And lately I've been feeling like I can't do it. I can't do it. But one person said something to me this last week and before this week and these weeks have been as been going through before we go through a storm god gives us a coaching tip right and uh he said the bible says our bodies is a living sacrifice right as christians we're called to sacrifice our, ourselves 
And it was kind of funny because it was a pastor who told me this. He was like, but if I'm supposed to be the sacrifice, the sacrifice keeps, uh, for those of you who don't know biblical terms, it's like when you're sacrificing an animal, you put it on the altar. You put it on this, basically this table, and then you just basically uh, kill it. <clears throat> and in our Christian faith, we're not, we're not saying we're going to physically kill ourselves or allow people to do that to us. We're saying <clears throat> when life is putting you through all these problems, we're supposed to endure it. Like the pressures of life are getting intense. We're supposed to, uh, it's going to overwhelm us. We're supposed to grow through the through the circumstance that we're put under, through the pressure. Pressure, in a, you can't get diamonds unless it's from coals. They, a lot of pressure is put through the coal in order to get diamonds in the same process of grapes. You know, if you want to get wine, you have to crush the grapes <clears throat> to get more wine. And that's the wisdom that this world doesn't understand, that God on that cross is a representation of 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 crushing Jesus to to get new life out of it you know and he's putting us through that same process and it's just like i just want to roll off that altar table and just be like no it's painful it hurts growing up hurts responsibility hurts you know forgiving people is a painful process even when they don't forgive you back loving people and being patient with impatient people is hard whatever you're going through is hard it's hard being the only one um suffering because that's what it feels like you know but that's where the lord meets us he meets us at our weakest point he doesn't meet us in our strength in our wisdom in our intellect and I think that's the thing that's hard for me. Is the more I travel, and when I mean travel, the more intimate my relationship grows with God in my journey. I feel like this, the pressures of life is getting more heavier than I can bear. And he's just like, don't roll off the table while I cleanse you, while I heal you, while I give you more... And it's like, we want the blessings of God. The blessings that God gives us, they're not physical. They're spiritual. They're, they're through. I've dealt with some people that I work with. They don't get along with somebody that comes into the store. And they go, oh, let me go take off until this person comes to the line. Or they'll switch over. I've tried to do that. I've done that in my life. But since I've dedicated my life to Christ, he says, nope, you're going to serve this person. You're going to help this person, even if you don't like them. Because I love them. Right now, I don't want to do this sermon, to be honest. It's cold down here. But God wants me to endure this suffering so someone may get something out of it. And when you suffer, God is getting the glory out of it. But the suffering will end. And you will be grateful that you went through it. And at times I went through it, after I went through some suffering, God was, I was like, wow, I have so much more peace, so much more um, patience. I have so much more, I'm so much more kinder than I was, you know. I have so much more joy in my heart my life I don't want anything you can give me all the things in the world I don't want that because what you truly want is peace patience love kindness you want the treasures of God but if, if you really want that you can't read a book reading a book other than the scriptures is never going to teach you that and even if you read the scriptures God wants you to go into the world he wants you to go and suffer 
I know that sounds so contradictory to why we're Christians. But you cannot grow by just reading the Bible. You cannot grow by just reading a bunch of books. It's foolishness to the world to suffer. But guess what? Look at Jesus on that cross. I, I, thought I, I thought I should do this and go to school and be a pastor and be a, the way the God does not think the way we think at all. We were grow, we were raised behind behind what we see. We see these big churches and we see these pulpits and all these people in crowds and, and we see these buildings and we think that's the church and it's not the church. You and I are the church. The church is right here. And the world needs the church to go out there, out those doors. But we think what we see is the church. And God says, stop paying attention to what you see, because what you see is temporary. The sun comes up and it goes down. It's gone. The clothes that you put on today and the one when you take it off, it's gone. Everything you see when you watch this video, it started and it will end. It's gone. It's over. Stop living for the world. Stop living for what you see. It's temporary. Everything is temporary. You were born. You see brand new babies being born. You see people dying every day. The knowledge and the philosophies and doctrines and music of this world, it's temporary. Here today, gone tomorrow. Feast your eyes on what is eternal. Jesus is eternal. His word is eternal. And he wants, a, he wants an eternal relationship with you, not a temporary one. You want to see the church move? You want to see the church uh, get up? It's not eyes it's not what you can see with human eyes. You need new eyes. You need spiritual eyes. You need spiritual ears. You need a spiritual understanding. You need spiritual heart. For the kingdom of God is, it cannot be seen with the eyes and ears and heart that you were born with in this world. It is greater than your understanding or any man can teach you. Because man will teach you what he sees. But God will teach you what you don't see. Feast your eyes on the holy, perfect, divine word of God. I don't want to be in the grocery store serving a bunch of these non-grateful, just, oh. I was one of them. I still am. But if that's what God wants me to do, Stop trying to go to school. Stop trying to think this is what your life should look like. Humble yourself to find out what God wants. You can do a thousand things of what the scripture says and thinking that what God wants from you, but he tells you this. He says this. You can do a million things for me and not do the one thing I asked you to do. It's like dirty rags to me. You know what dirty rags means? Someone told me this. A pastor, that pastor told me this. He said, dirty rags means when women are on their menstrual cycle and they, they just imagine a tampon, a dirty, nasty tampon, the dirtiest thing you can imagine. That's what your works are for me. Your works, your effort is like dirty rags. You wouldn't even want to touch it. But you bring that to the offering table as if it's the greatest thing ever. Stop trying to please me by what you think you need to please me with and start doing what I say. The way we show that the way we show that we love God is by obedience. Stop doing the thousand million things that I don't care about versus the one thing I keep telling you to do. Believe in me. 
and trust in me. Stop leaning on your own understanding. Follow me, Jesus says. Follow me, Jesus says. Stop following pastors in places and doctrines and philosophies and devotionals. See, Jesus says, follow me. And I will show you. I will open your eyes, your heart to what man has never known. It's a mystery for those who don't really believe. Repent of your sins. I know them. I'll tell you something, man. I'll tell you something that happened yesterday. This is a testimony. And this is a, probably not the first time it happened, but the first time I was like, oh my God. Practically fell to my knees. God is beyond reason. He's beyond reason. The Bible is for you to understand that you can't understand. The more I read it, the more I'm like, I don't understand this. I understand it, but I don't understand it. How, who could do this? Who could, who, who could create something from nothing? Call into existence and call out into existence. When I look around the world, it doesn't make sense. When I look at creation, when I look at man's design, everything makes sense. Jesus said this to me when I first got saved. He says, do you, does everything need to make sense? Why can't you just believe in me? Watch the movie Polar Express. Just believe. We lost our car keys yesterday at Walmart. I'm not going to tell you why and how, but I'll tell you why, but not how. Just lost them. Couldn't find them. I put them in the car, but they're just gone. My wife checked her pockets. I checked my pockets, ran around into the parking lot, made sure the car was there twice. Just someone took them, went and asked the people there at Walmart, did you see any car keys? No, they would have turned in their customer service. Customer service. Went to customer service, couldn't find them. Was, What's going on? We got two babies in the middle of Elko. What the heck were we supposed to do? She starts praying. I start praying. I'm like, oh, God, oh, Lord. Like, we need, how are we going to get these car keys? Our extra car keys are all the way back 70 miles home. We know nobody in Elko. And we sure enough can't afford someone to break into our car or you know what I mean hire a locksmith we just start praying just start praying oh freak I get another shopping cart I'm like we're gonna be walking around here again looking for the car car keys I ran around the store twice and then I was like let's just both do it together keyword together pray together do it together we walk basically down one aisle she stops, looks at me, immediately puts her hand in the pocket and goes, Shh, found the car keys. That doesn't make sense to me. I asked her over and over and over again, you didn't put the car keys in your pocket? She's like, nope. You checked your pockets before when I said that I lost the car keys, I couldn't find them. Yep. It doesn't make any sense. And some of you guys are trying to make sense of your faith just like me doesn't make any sense reasoning everything with your science and your doctrines your philosophies and God is bigger than that the only thing that made sense was I prayed and she prayed and God answered and he's saying the same thing to you why won't you just believe in me stop trying to understand what I'm doing in your life and just trusted me. Because that's how I feel every day now. I feel like I don't know what the next step is going to look like. And I'm scared. Because usually I'm like, oh, I kind of get it. I kind of, I can kind of see, you know, like 10 feet down the way, 
10 minutes up ahead. I can kind of perceive that. And now I'm at a point in my life where all these things and more burdens and more things are happening. I'm just like, I don't understand what you're doing. I don't get it. But I know one thing that you want me to do. You want me to trust in you. And that's the only thing God asks for you. He's not asking you to understand the entire Bible. He's not asking you to do anything besides trust him. Believe in Jesus. And he says, until you do that, I will not open your eyes, your mind, your heart, your spirit to what is eternal. And your value will only be what you see and hear and what you understand. Believe, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. I thank you for watching. God bless.